Hello to our parents and families joining us today. My name is Lexi McCarthy and I'm the Director of Parent and Family Relations. Welcome to our chapter six chat. This chat is part of a summer common read series where we will discuss specific portions of Marjorie Savage's, you're on your own, but I'm here if you need me. We will hold chapter chat sessions like this one throughout the summer on Facebook to discuss different chapters with Westchester experts. And then we'll end the summer with an author chat with Marjorie Savage herself. Stay tuned for more details on that. Today, I am excited to have Dr. Tabitha Adkins with me, the Dean of University College, to discuss Chapter 6, Credit Loads and GPAs. Welcome, Dr. Adkins. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk to our parents and families about support services that we have available at Westchester. Wonderful. We're so thrilled to have you. Can you please introduce yourself a little bit, talk a little bit about your role, and then something you believe makes Westchester special? Absolutely. Um, so, Dr. Tabitha Adkins. I have been at Westchester University since 2018. Um, that is the year that we launched the University College, which is what I'm the Dean of. And I'm also the Associate Provost for Student Success. I have a long title. Basically, all that means is that I'm here to make sure that our students are getting the support that they need to be successful. Uh, it's my job to help keep students at Westchester and successful and making the best grades that they can make. Um, and so the University College, which is what I'm the Dean of, is our area that does a couple of things. Uh, it has our interdisciplinary studies degree for students who want to, you know, take a little of this and a little of that and make their own customized degree. Um, it's also where our exploratory studies students or students who haven't yet identified a major or are waiting to qualify for a major uh, receive their advising and support towards selecting the right major for their goals. Um, and then we are also home to a lot of support services, um, everything from tutoring, success coaching, um, our services for students with disabilities, our special admissions program, the Academic Success Program, or ASP, um, the Writing Center. Um, I'm gonna make sure I'm not leaving anything out. Our ROTC program and our RAM Initiative program for students with intellectual disabilities. And then one thing that you think makes Westchester extra special? You know, when I came here, what impressed me was that um, everyone had their priorities straight. You know, that, that, that our, the people who work at the university take a great deal of pride in working at Westchester and supporting Westchester students um, to the point that, you know, people get emotional about what it is that our mission is and, and the students that we're supporting with that mission. And so I felt like I found a group of people who had the, a common goal and worked together really well because of that. The thing that impresses me about Westchester students more than any other student body I've ever worked with is that Westchester students are typically very um, interested in helping each other. You know, our, our students are very unselfish, very community minded, um, very globally minded. And, and that's something that I'm so impressed by and that I love so much about our Golden Rams. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Tabitha. I agree. Yeah. So let's start digging into the chapter. So in chapter six, Savage discusses academic life, which you are an expert of. Um, I prepared a few questions and I'm hoping we can discuss related to the concepts and how the content of the chapter really applies to Westchester. Should we get started? Yeah, let's go. Great. So the first question is what resources are available at Westchester to support struggling students? So we have a lot of resources available, but I, I wanna uh, pause on the word struggling because I think that that's how we tend to think about resources for students maybe in high school. In college, we think about these resources not for struggling students, but for all students. The resources that we have at Westchester are utilized by all students. We really want to normalize getting support and asking for help, but because college is hard, it is hard. And, and that's why you know it has the prestige attached to it that it has. And so we really want students to, to realize Yep, college is hard, but there's always people who are in my corner who really want to help. And so we want to normalize that asking for help. Um, so, you know, the, the services that I really wanted to point to is 
our tutoring services that we have available in the LARC and the Writing Center. Um, this is, you know, we really focus on some of the really mo more difficult courses, the courses that tend to have lower grades in them. Um, we have tutoring that's available online or in person, one-on-one -on -one in small groups. We really try to be flexible and provide tutoring so students can work that into their busy schedules and, and according to their preferences for how they want to learn. Um, we also have a success coaching program, which is something I remain very excited about. This is where students can connect with an experienced peer mentor, someone who has earned a bachelor's degree, who has been there, done that, who's working toward a graduate degree. And they can talk about anything that related to being successful in college. You know, how do I study for tests? How do I manage my schedule? How do I take notes so that I'm remembering what I learned in class? How do I study? How do I... Um, how do I prepare for a test? What's the best way to approach a test? How do I manage all these things that are going on? Because I have these classes and I have to study so much and I wanna be involved on campus and I have a job. How do I balance all that? And so they're really there to be sort of like a big brother, big sister kind of person to the student to help them figure this out. We've seen really great results with students who participate in this program. And we find that the sweet spot is that if they go to see a success coach about three times, the national data shows that three visits with a success coach can make a really big difference in a student's success. And so we, we really are very excited about this program. Um, for students who had um, an IEP, an individual as education plan in high school, we have our services for students with disabilities office. And, you know, they can be someone who didn't have an IEP in high school too, but this is, um, a service that just makes sure that students are getting the learning accommodations that they need and are entitled to uh, at the university. The OSSD process is really different than the IEP process because it's very collaborative with the students. And the, the OSSD faculty really sit down and create a partnership with the student to create a plan for what they'll need to be successful in college. A lot of students come to college and they try to go it alone. They try to um, say, oh, you know, I don't want anybody to know that I need help. I don't want anybody to know that I have a disability. And I really want to encourage our parents and families to support students through going ahead and registering with that office, regardless of, of those desires, because those services aren't retroactive. And so if a student starts going it alone and then finds that they, they wish they hadn't, then, you know, it, it's too late at that point, right? The other thing is that Students give me these letters saying that they have a disability. I provide the accommodation and then I forget about it. it I don't get hung up on the fact that a student in my class has a disability. It's not a big deal to me, right? This, a lot of students on campus have disabilities and we have a lot of students registered with this office. It's not abnormal to be registered with this office at all. Um, and, and the other thing I would say is that, you know, better just to have the conversation and not use the resource than to not have the resource. And so we really wanna encourage our students um, to, to go ahead and register, even if they don't think they wanna use the services. Uh, and we really would like to partner with our parents and families to encourage our students to do that. Uh, we also help students with our, their major selection. I mentioned that earlier, that's an important resource. Finding that right fit is really important for students. And we really wanna help students get there. Um, some other resources that we have at Westchester that are really important, I think, for support of students is our career development office. You know, this is something that students should start engaging immediately upon coming to the university, not just when they're a junior or a senior looking at applying for internships and jobs. Uh, we have great resources that help students find a match for their career based on their passions, their morals, their values, you know, the things that they love doing. It's a great office, a great resource, and we really think that this can help students find direction and find Finding that direction early on is a great thing. Um, we also have a counseling center that supports students' emotional and mental health. And um, this is a resource that's well utilized at the university. Again, we want to normalize asking for help when we need it. College is stressful, it's hard, and there's all kinds, of, it's not like you go to college and everything else turns off, right? So these, this is a free resource to students, and so they should really take advantage of that. And then also involvement. I just want to mention getting involved in campus. There is so much good data that shows that students who are involved at the university tend to make better grades. They tend to get hired more quickly in higher paying jobs after they're at the university. And it just creates a sense of belonging at the university that we know is really important to student success. So, you know, we have these fairs where students can see all the different opportunities to get involved at the university. And we really, really want to encourage students to do that 
early in their first year. And, and if our parent and family partners can help encourage students to do that, that would be fantastic. We can certainly make that happen. Thank you, Tabitha. That was a great overview of the resources, both within academic affairs and in student affairs. Huh. Um, the, this series will cover some of those student affairs topics too. So I'm excited um, for our families and guests to hear more about those things. Um, it's so clear you have such a passion for our students and we're so lucky to have you here. So my next question um, relates to something that you talked to at the beginning of that last answer um, about the difference between college and high school. And um, I specifically wanna highlight that difference between grades in high school and college, but any other differences that you think are notable could be really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So in general, there is some level of independence that's expected of, call of students in college. I think that there's a stereotype that, um, uh, that, that goes too far that says um, that college professors don't know students' names and they don't care if you're there or not. And so there's no reason to attend class. That is not true. Um, college professors do know their students' names. They do care if students come to class. They do take attendance. There is daily work in class. You know, it's not always um, just the sage on the stage talking and not interacting with students, right? Sometimes we have that, but sometimes we have, you know, the more of the, the guide on the side model where they're really working with students in class. And so um, it absolutely is important to, to professors to know their students and, and to, to work with them uh, so they have the best experience. But there is some independence that is, is required. Um, the way grades are calculated um, for classes, it's described in the syllabus. And the syllabus is, you know, this document that students get in the first class that sort of demonstrates, you know, what the class is about, what the student will have to complete in order to, um, to earn a grade in the class, what they're gonna learn in the class, due dates, all sorts of things. It's kind of um, the, the contract between the faculty member and the student about what the class is gonna be like. Um, some faculty use the grade book function in D2L, our course management system, to keep track of grades and students can track their grade there, um, but that is not required. Only some faculty do that. Um, some, some tips that I would give to students about this is to keep track of their own grade. The syllabus will explain to you how that's supposed to work. And you know, just keep track of your grades and, and make sure that you know what, you, what credit you earned on what document. We're not perfect. Occasionally we make a tabulation error. And if you see that, just ask questions about what you don't understand. Also, we know that you're new to college, right? And so we, we wanna help students learn how to do this. Um, sometimes we find that students are shocked by the first round of grades they received. Um, and and um, I, I just wanna say that, you know, again, this is at the resources that they have available to them. Um, this is um, normal. Lots of students are shocked by the first grade. We, we really don't want students to take that first grade and say, oh my gosh, this proves that I don't belong here or that I'm not cut out for college. We, that's the opposite of what we want to happen, right? This is just a way to, to measure students where they are at that moment. And so, you know, please help us make sure that your students don't get discouraged, right? That, that, you know, they're in college because they're there to learn something they don't know yet, right? And we're there to help them um, let know that. I would say that um, one, one thing I want to say about faculty is that faculty are in this work because they want to teach students. They, they are experts in their content and they want to teach students and, and be a teacher to students, right? And so students should always feel like they can ask faculty about the class, about their grade, about these sorts of things. But again, there is a level of independence that's expected and is, is sort of outlined in the syllabus. Yeah. Thanks, Tabitha. That was that was super helpful. I, I think my next question is a really nice transition, which yeah. is what is the appropriate chain of command when something happens in a class or a student has an issue? Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of families and parents are used to being that um, first point of contact and then trying to act upon that, but that, that changes in college and wanted to, to ask your advice on that. Sure, so um, students should always talk first with the professor, preferably during their office hours or in a one-on-one -on -one scheduled meeting. Um, sometimes students try to get the professor at the end of class and you know they're running off to teach their next class or they have to go to office hours or they have a meeting and that doesn't go as well. And so my advice would be to make an appointment, to plan time to get together. Um, 
my, my, the other important advice there is to come to the meeting with the assumption that the faculty member is in this business because they want to teach students, right? Just come with that assumption. Don't assume you know, that they're out to get you or that they're, you know, that, that they're mean or that they don't want to talk or, you know, you're intimidated because they're so smart, right? Come to the conversation with the assumption that they're here because they want to work with students. Westchester, we really want to hire faculty who want to work with students, you know, so that, that's important to our values. And I think you'll see that in the professors you work with at Westchester. Um, so the students should talk to the professor about the concern. If they're not happy with that conversation, we do have a chain of command that they should follow. The next person is the chair of the department where the course is housed. So if it's an accounting course, they should talk to the chair of the accounting department, et cetera. Um, if they're not happy with that conversation, they can go to the dean's office, right? And then, of course, if, if students need help navigating this or, you know, figuring out the chain of command, they can always reach out to us at University College. Um, they, can, they can send us an email at studentsuccess at wcupa.edu um, or go to Support Center, which is our website where students can find information about different sorts of things. And that's just wcupa.edu slash support. Thanks, Tabitha. I also want to highlight, we have a student ombuds at Westchester too. So if, if any of that navigation of relationships needs a little bit of finessing, we have a student ombuds, which is just an advocate and mediator. Um, and that's Dr. Lisa Montgomery, and she is fabulous and a great resource for students too. Absolutely. Great. So my next question is about the general education curriculum and the FYE course. I think some of that is a little bit confusing to our new families. Um, so I'd love some of that um, overview of that, of that process. Absolutely. Um, it, it's complicated. And so I'll try not to get too far into the weeds, but I do want to you know, be thorough here. So general education are the course requirements that every Westchester student has regardless of their major. Uh, we really want our students to come out with some similar kinds of information regardless of their major. Um, our general education requirements are based on the concept of a liberal arts education and all that means is that we want students to have knowledge in a variety of fields in order to support their development as a critical thinker and as a well-rounded citizen. Um, also makes them more interesting at parties when they're talking with random people about whatever topics come up, makes them better Jeopardy players, etc. You know, to know a little bit about a lot is really important. Um, so our focus of liberal arts education is to learn how to be a learner. And we know that this is critical because our students' future um, will likely involve um, making career changes, not just job changes, but career changes. So recent study showed that nearly half of adults make a major career, not job, but career change in their lifetime, typically around age 39. Um, so we want to make sure that students are learning how to be learners because they're going to learn their entire lives. It doesn't stop after college. So our requirements include what you might expect, English composition, mathematics, an interdisciplinary course where they're having to use strategies from different kinds of fields to learn about something, a diverse community course, ethics, arts, behavioral and social science, humanities, science, languages and cultures, a speaking emphasis course, a writing emphasis course, and our first year experience course. Some of these requirements might be met um, by one course. For example, one course might have both a science credit and a writing emphasis credit or something like that. So um, there are ways to sort of economize the courses you're taking. And sometimes departments make recommendations about what general education courses they want students in their major to take. Um, an example, we were recently working with a student to find a course that would cover both his diverse community course and his writing requirement. And we found several options available for him to take the summer, in fact, so he'll graduate this summer. Our FYE class is something I'm gonna spend a little bit of time about um, because we are very excited about our FYE class, first year experience, what that stands for. It's really unlike any other FYE course I've ever seen at another university. It is a credit, it's a, a, a course that carries four credits um, and it's required, as I mentioned, by the general education requirements. This is a course that's team taught by a group, you typically four, of the university's very best faculty who work together to ensure that students have an incredible introduction to the university. Class meets in two formats, in small groups with their individual faculty member, and then as a large group with all four faculty members in attendance. 
students take the class with other students who are pursuing similar majors. So um, I teach in the humanities section. So we have students who are studying English and history and, and, and topics like that, languages. Uh, the content of this course covers things like the liberal arts education, which I've already mentioned, the science of learning, because we want students to learn how to be learners, um, some focus on their major and what kinds of questions people in that major ask about the world. We cover things like very practical things like how to register for classes, how to read a degree plan, resources available at Westchester University. And then every course has some sort of experiential learning project where students apply what they're learning in the classroom, outside of the classroom. A lot of times we work with our student affairs partners for those kinds of projects. Um, and so, so we're really excited about our FYE class. We feel like it's really special. We feel like it's an experience that um, students remember. We think it's a high impact practice, which we know has an impact on student retention and success. And we just, we're big fans. That's awesome. I think that my next question really ties into that nicely because it sounds like the first year experience class really gives students an opportunity to make a connection with the faculty member. And yeah. that was certainly my experience when I went through the first experience, um, first year experience course at, at my institution. So what advice can you provide to students who are looking to engage with faculty members? How does that look? Is it introducing themselves after class? Is it, what is an office hour? Those sorts of questions. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I go back to these assumptions that we really want students to make about faculty member. I want them to assume that our faculty members are here because they want to teach students. You know, I will say that, you know, I started my career as a faculty member and I probably I probably started my job as a faculty member because I wanted to be alone with my books. You know, I I, I my, my background is in English and I probably was drawn to going to graduate school in English because I loved reading and writing and talking about reading and writing. Um, but the reason I've stayed is because of students. And so I, I really think that our families and parents should make assumptions that that's why our faculty members are here because of students. Um, some other assumptions I want students to make about their faculty members is that they know a lot about what they're teaching. They're, they're experts. They have doctorates in this discipline. And so they really are experts. They want to get to know their students. They want students to visit during office hours and they want students to let them know if they're having trouble about anything, whether it be class content or deadlines that they're needing to meet or outside of class distractions. We want to know about that so that we can help, so that we can make informed decisions about how to best support you, et cetera. Um, and then there's also some things that we want students to know um, about, about faculty members in general. One is that they're often teaching several courses and they might have hundreds of students. So for this reason, it's really important to read and follow the syllabus and the guidelines and deadlines that are provided. Something else I want students to know about faculty is that they're really proud to work at Westchester and they take a lot of pride in the achievements of their students. You know, we're right now um, just celebrating commencement, you know, and it is not unusual commencement to see a faculty member shed a tear or just the, the you know, we, we leave with our faces hurting because we just are so happy to celebrate that moment. And so um, I think that speaks to the, the pride that students, or the faculty take in their students' achievement. Um, the other thing is that faculty members really take the work of preparing students for their futures very seriously. You know, they're there to teach students about professional ethics, how to be a professional in that given field. Um, this is why we've emphasized academic integrity and making sure that we're following rules regarding plagiarism and cheating and those sorts of things very seriously because faculty really take seriously that they're preparing the leaders of tomorrow. And, um, you know, I think that's something that we should assume about all of our faculty members. I like that. I like that you've, you've consistently said that we take this work really seriously because we yeah. do. I often tell families that you need to trust us, that we want the very best for your students. We want them to succeed more than anything in the world. And I think underlining that in this interview has been really great. Yeah. So I'm going to end with a little bit of a softy, but what lingo should families be aware of as they're talking to their students in that first couple months um, that could help them be cool or hip or also just informed? Yeah, there, we have a lot of lingo at the university, and I will just share that I was a first-generation college student, and I didn't know any of this lingo going into college, and so um, 
I, I wish that the, the university wasn't so lingo heavy, but we are, and it's not just Westchester. It's just, it's the Academy, you know, this is how we do it. And so I, it is my pleasure to try to try to demystify some of this for, for our families. Um, because, because I, you know, I, I went to college with a lot of questions about things like this. Uh, so I mentioned FYE, our first year experience. That's something that you'll hear thrown around a lot. Um, Bursar is a big one. Bursar is basically just the accounts payable department, right? And we can call it a bursar. Uh, registrar is the same sort of thing. The registrar is just, you know, the office where all the records are kept, right? Um, advisor, this is an um, important thing. An advisor is not really like a high school counselor. Their role is a little different. Um, they do help students select courses and those sorts of things, but they're not providing the same kind of guidance that a high school guidance counselor provides. Um, but there are other areas of the university that can support that need if it is there. Um, I mentioned I'm a first generation college student. We just call those students first gen at Westchester. And we celebrate our first gen students. We're really excited that 30% of our students or more are first gen students. And so um, first gen is something that you hear a lot. D2L, this is a big one. D2L is our course management system. And this is basically just where students can go and find a course shell for their classes. Maybe not all their classes, but some of them will use D2L to sort of organize the grade book and the syllabus and different assignments. And they might turn work into D2L, um, but that's, that's just where we manage our courses online. Um, My WCU is another big one. This is, um, basically just the portal to the student's account. It's where they'll find grades. It's where they register for classes. Uh, it's um, where they can request a transcript when they've graduated, that sort of thing. This is sort of the business end of the university. Um, you can think about it that way. Um, and then just two jobs we want to let you know about. One is the dean. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, lore about the job of a dean. You know, I, I, somebody asked me one time what I did at Westchester and I said, I'm a dean. And they said, you're a dean of the whole university. And I said, no, 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 that's president, right? I'm just a dean of my area, right? And so uh, I think there's a lot of movies where, where the dean is sort of the enemy of the students. And that's so not the case in reality. We're just here to help students. Our deans are very collaborative and very student focused. And we really want to uh, know our students and help them in any way we can. And so uh, if the student gets a message from the dean, it's not because they're in trouble, it's because the dean wants to help or wants to connect or just wants to be part of the student's experience. And so they should be excited to get a message from their dean. Um, and then this is a big one for me, and this is provost. And I mentioned that I'm associate provost, but our provost, Dr. Bernowski, is sort of She's the chief academic officer of the university, or you can think of her as like the head professor, right? She is she, all, the, all the professors and all the faculty and all the academic kinds of things at the university report through her. And so a lot of people don't know what that role is called, but it's a really important role at the university, the provost. And so um, again, the, our provost is very um, excited about working at Westchester. She's been here a long time and she's very proud of our students and, and their experience here too. And so a provost to someone else that students should not fear. Thanks, Tabitha, for detangling some of that alphabet yeah. soup. Yeah. Um, we've got some great websites on our website that provide some of that um, alphabet soup lingo as well, and we'll be happy to share that. So right. we end all of our chapter chats with a parting word of advice. So Dr. Adkins, if you could share a final piece of wisdom with members of our RAM fam connected to this topic area or not, um, what would you tell them? I, I would say that take this time before the student starts at the university to normalize asking for help, to normalize seeking support services, and to normalize um, you know, doing that independently, right? You know, I, I've heard a great piece of advice recently that have your, your student make a doctor's appointment uh, or um, you know, have them you know, deal with some important piece of paperwork. I think teaching and supporting that independence is really important right now. And um, students need to get used to advocating for themselves to some degree. We certainly want to partner with our families and parents. And, and you know, I, I have never not responded to a parent or family member who reached out to me, but we do have limitations as to how much we can, we can engage with our families and our parents. And so teaching that independence right now is really important. I think that that's great advice. I, I read recently that our whole lives as parents, we tell children, don't talk to strangers. 
and then they go to college where it's full of strangers, right? So that making the doctor's appointment, calling for takeout, doing some of that stranger talking before you get to this place where the world is strangers, strangers that are looking to be helpful and be friends yeah. um, is really useful. So that's a great tip. I think that's, that's great advice. I just want to add one other thing, which is yeah, please do. There, there is this, this phrase in locus parentis that is, that basically means in place of parents, I think it's Greek or something. And, and it's, it, it's, it was used to describe the early university model. And I, I, I just want to say that we definitely are not trying to replace our families and parents, but we do understand that they are placing a great deal of trust in us in not only caring for their students and their safety and, and getting, you know, the credential they've come here to earn, but also we understand that they're putting trust in the dreams of that the family has for that student and that that student has for themselves in us to help them get there. And we take that so seriously and we are so honored when students choose us to help them fulfill those dreams. And, and I think I, I really want our families and parents to hear me say that because it, it really is an honor that we, we're so serious about. And um, we, we hope that, um, you know, we work every day to be worthy of that honor. Thanks, Tabitha. That was beautiful. And thank you for your time, Dr. Adkins. This was really a great conversation, and I know it will be really helpful to our incoming families and possibly our, our families that we've had with us for, for a little bit. Great. And thank you to our viewers. If you have any additional questions, you need some resources, you want to tie back to anything we talked about, please feel free to contact the Office of Parent and Family Relations um, via email at parentfamilyrelations at wcupa.edu. Thank you all, and we always say, Rams up. Rams up.